If Captain America and the Winter Soldier taught us one thing, it's that robot arms are super cool, especially when attached to super soldiers. You have a metal arm? That is awesome, dude! If it taught us anything else, it's that Bucky Barnes is one of the most nuanced and tragic characters in the MCU. Bucky Barnes is the 80-year-old friend of Captain America, and a fan favorite in the MCU. He was also a ruthless assassin known as the Winter Soldier, but that wasn't his fault. Bucky was first introduced into the MCU as in the original Captain America film, no surprise there. But it was also here that he met his untimely demise. Of course, nowadays we know he was resurrected and made into the Soviet agent known as the Winter Soldier. But what was he doing during the nearly 70 years he was unaccounted for? Well, let's find out just what happened to this cybernetic Soviet Captain America while Steve Rogers was taking a well-earned ice bath. As anyone who has kept up with the MCU knows, Bucky had a fake-out demise in the first Captain America film where he fell off a Hydra train to his apparent end. Bucky did survive this, however, largely due to the fact that he was used as a test subject for the Hydra-made Super Soldier Serum. He was injected with the serum by the mad German doctor Arnim Zola. He's like the medic from Team Fortress 2, except he never actually heals anyone. Even though he was able to survive with a little help from the good old Super Soldier Serum, his arm was completely done for. Fortunately for Bucky, he was recovered by a Soviet soldier and taken to a POW camp to recover. Unfortunately for Bucky, he was also selected to be a candidate for the Winter Soldier program. Even though he got a super cool robotic arm to replace his lost one, he was subjected to torturous brainwashing and mind control from Hydra's memory suppressing machine. Eventually, he was mated to the Soviet super agent we all know as the Winter Soldier. However, all that is getting ahead just a bit. There's a lot of detail to cover between that fateful train ride and Bucky fully becoming the Winter Soldier. Most notably, the time that he spent in the aforementioned memory suppressing machine and his subsequent brainwashing. This machine caused severe brain damage on Bucky and essentially made him into a blank slate with no memories or feelings that Hydra could imprint onto. We see this in Captain America the Winter Soldier when the S.H.I.E.L.D. trader Alexander Pierce forces Bucky to undergo further shock therapy in order to erase the memories he began having of Steve Rogers. The control aspect of Hydra's plan for the Winter Soldier comes in the form of a series of trigger words which when spoken elicit complete obedience from Bucky and are nearly impossible to break. These words would be spoken before each mission for the Winter Soldier and would ensure the job would be done without remorse or compassion. Just what jobs was Bucky forced to undertake while operating as a Winter Soldier? Well, some you already know, but some will almost definitely surprise you. It's no surprise that as the Winter Soldier, Bucky was kept in pristine condition, clearly evidenced by his nearly ageless appearance almost 70 years after his disappearance and capture. Bucky? Who the hell is Bucky? This was due to the fact that in order to keep Bucky in his prime, he was put into a cryogenic sleep, sometimes for years at a time. In between every single mission, Bucky was put into a cryogenic sleep chamber, which would lower his body temperature to absolute zero, completely halting his aging process. Bucky was never allowed to do anything other than cryosleep, go on missions, and be strapped into his torturous brainwashing device. Talk about a rude awakening. We see other cryopods used in Civil War as well, being used to contain the more recent and more aggressive Winter Soldier candidates before they were disposed of by Zemo at the end of the film. While operating as a Winter Soldier, Bucky did some less than savory things. But clearly, you can't really blame him for that. He was essentially a mindless robot during his time working for Hydra. Give the man a break, please. With that being said, however, he definitely stayed busy during his all expenses paid stay at Hydra. One of the most notable jobs that Bucky ever went on was in 1991 to obtain an American recreation of the Super Soldier Serum made by Howard Stark. Oh yeah, you can see where this is going. He was tasked with acquiring the newly created Super Soldier Serum as well as the elimination of both Howard and Maria Stark, and he did so in an absolutely ruthless fashion. The Winter Soldier forced their car to crash, and after taking the Super Soldier Serum, he brutally beat the already wounded Howard Stark and finished off his wife as well. He then proceeded to destroy all of the cameras in the area to make the crash look like an accident. This, of course, was a major sticking point for the friendship between Iron Man and Captain America, and led to the big climax fight scene between the three. The serum that was obtained from this mission was used to create a new generation of Winter Soldiers, which were disposed of by Zemo near the end of Civil War. The assassination of the Starks were undoubtedly one of the most significant missions carried out by the Winter Soldier, but he did do a number of other notable and terrible deeds in his time as a Hydra agent. Bucky was also directly responsible for the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and was never even known to have been there. 
So the Witcher Soldier was undoubtedly the most ruthless agent that Hydra had fielded at this time. Most intelligent agencies in the MCU doubted that he ever even existed in the first place. Bucky as the Winter Soldier was also responsible for the near assassination of the at-the-time director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury, after he was catching on to the Hydra rot running rampant throughout the organization. Fortunately, Fury was too clever for even the Winter Soldier to get his icy cold grips on him. It's fortunate that Captain America was defrosted in the time that he was, because any later and who knows who would have been able to stop the Winter Soldier's rampage. Fortunately, Steve Rogers was the one person Bucky was able to remember, and he was able to snap him out of it for just long enough for him to escape. After Cap and Bucky had their huge battle over the S.H.I.E.L.D. Triskelion headquarters, Bucky was able to escape the binds of Hydra and began regaining the memories he had of his original life. Bucky returned to the ideal Federal Savings Bank in DC, which was a front for Hydra and a common deployment point for the Winter Soldier. He attacked the scientists there, but since he had regained his memories and thus his morality, Bucky stopped himself from ending the lives of the scientists and instead left them there. Shortly after his visit to the Faux Bank, Bucky went to the Smithsonian and found a memorial of himself honored along with his squad, the Howling Commandos, as he was believed to be KIA for over half a century. At this point, Bucky realized that he was on the run not just from the remnants of Hydra, but also the American government. So he went into hiding for some time. During this time, Bucky kept a notebook to keep track of all his past memories. The next major thing to happen to Bucky was during the events of Captain America's Civil War, for which he was framed for the attack on the Vienna International Center, which led to the loss of T'Chaka, the at the time King of Wakanda and father to T'Challa. This event led to Steve Rogers reconvening with Bucky, working together as fugitives in order to clear his name and recover more of his memories. Eventually, he comes into contact with Helmut Zemo, who had framed him for the attack and had further information regarding Bucky's time as Hydra's Winter Soldier. Zemo read to Bucky the mind control words from the Winter Soldier book and he proceeded to go on a rampage throughout the facility. Fortunately, Captain America forced him to crash his helicopter and give him a bonk on the head to regain control over himself. What a good friend. Sometimes your friends just need a good bonk to snap out of it. Eventually, it was revealed to Tony that the Winter Soldier was the one who killed his parents, which leads into the awesome final battle between Bucky, Cap, and Iron Man. Tony puts up a significant fight, completely destroying Bucky's robotic arm in the process. But ultimately, the two escape the still enraged Avenger. Eventually, Bucky is brought to Wakanda in an attempt to keep him under the radar as he is still wanted by much of the world. In Wakanda, he has the remains of his robotic arm removed and is placed in cryosleep while the Wakandan scientists think of a way to break him of his deeply ingrained Hydra brainwashing. Eventually, they found a way to sever his connection to the brainwashing effects and he was truly a free man, unbound by anyone but himself. And now Bucky is free to be the true hero he always wanted to be, just like he was way back in 1945. Bucky is a popular character for MCU fans, and really, it's not hard to see why. His deeply personal struggle resonates, and even though he doesn't choose to commit the bad deeds he did, it still weighs on his conscience. Hopefully Bucky can continue to redeem himself and move forward.